And now a reading from Midnight Confessions by Stephen Colbert. When I go into a McDonald's that has the calories printed on the menu, I pretend they're points and I'm going to win. I don't care. I just don't care. There. Okay. Hey everybody, welcome back to Books Yada Yada. I'm Dina and thank you so much for watching my channel. So today what we've got is a library haul slash BAM haul. So what I did was kind of, a, it was a mini haul. I really didn't go crazy. So as I'm rambling on here, I completely forgot to segue into the library introduction portion of the video. That's the haul and the BAM haul. So that's just me rambling away. So come with me to the library. So this is our lovely little local library. We actually have two different libraries in our town. I'm not sure exactly why, but one is on the other side of the town. Um, this library is called the Bill Library, named after... Excellent! <laughs> no, actually it's named for that gentleman right there named Henry Bill. He was actually a very well-known philanthropist here in Connecticut and was a school teacher for years and years and years in the mid-1800s through the late 1800s and actually paid for the education of former slaves. And it was right at that moment that the librarian snuck up on me, so here we are at BAM. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Bam, bam, bam. Bam! Bam, bam! Overstock sale. Very excited. Yeah, I always forget to ask permission if I can film in a store. I just go ahead and do it. And people always, you know, look at you funny like, what the heck is she doing? She's just swinging her her phone around aimlessly, you know, uh, but I could care less what people think. So I love this part of BAM. It's my favorite section, the bargain priced books. Yay. Um, always find some really good deals and little treasures in here. So um, I did have a saleswoman uh, kind of come up to me. So I had to <laughs> stop, <laughs> which you will see right about here. And so here I am still rambling, but about to introduce my very first book of my library haul. So the first one is called The Nanny by Gilly McMillan. I think it's Gilly McMillan, right? 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 Right. I've never read anything by Gilly McMillan, and I've heard a lot of really good things about her. Um, I don't know too much about her. I believe that she's a British author. Gilly McMillan. <laughs> Gilly McMillan. Yeah, this came out in 2019. So um, I've been trying to play catch up a little bit with some of the books that I've missed this year um, and some of the books that came out last year that have gotten a lot of hype and I've seen circulating on BookTube like big time and I, I just really want to read them. So I'm kind of like on, a, um, on the prowl for those books. So you guys know how I feel about nannies, right? The Bartels couldn't believe how fortunate they were to find Peyton. I adore children. This is Fartel. If you've been watching my channel for a while, for some reason, there's I read books that just happen to have a nanny involved. She seems terrific. What's the catch? There is no catch. I think she's great. And I always say, don't trust the nanny. You never let an attractive woman take a power position in your home. All I'm saying is you have to watch your back. Right, because there's so many examples of not, in real life, of not trusting the nanny. <laughs> That rocks the cradle is the hand that rules the world. And I and I spouted them off before in another video. What goes around comes around. But you've got so many. I mean, Jennifer Garner, Ben Affleck, celebrities we're talking about here, right? Gwen Stefani, Gavin Rosdale. You've got the Ethan Hoffman, and the Uma Thurman. You've got the uh, uh, the Ryan Felipe kid and the Reese Witherspoon one. Like, didn't they have a nanny issue? It seems like any time there's a nanny involved. Well, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger. Arnold. Arnold. And Maria Shriver. I mean, technically, that was the nanny. Their destruction. There's only one woman for me. That's all you need. I mean, come on, people, right? So this, so don't trust 
the nanny. Just never trust the nanny. Anyone can have an accident. And for some reason, I happen to come across books all the time that involve a nanny. And I don't know why, because I've never had a nanny. And I would never have a nanny if I did have small children. If something happens to my mommy, you take care of me. Of course I would. Um, because I read too many books that um, that situation just never works out for anyone, does it? <sighs> anyway, so, yeah, so this book is about, um, get to the point, Dina. It was at this point that I needed to take a break from the nanny. Oh, my God. Well, the book is about uh, a girl called Jocelyn. She's seven years old, and one night her nanny, who she loves very, very much, Mm -hmm. more in fact than her own mother, mm -hmm. uh, disappears overnight um, without any explanation and Justin wakes up and is distraught. Uh, the main story of the book takes place 30 years later when she has to return to the family home through tragic circumstances. Mm -hmm. She has a daughter of her own and she has to um, figure out how to get along with her mother. Mm -hmm. She feels like she's regressed, as we all do when we go home. And they have definitely a strained relationship. They have an extremely strained relationship for lots of complicated reasons. And one day there's a knock on the door and there's a woman who says, I was your nanny. So, you know, I had read the description in, I think on Goodreads, and then I saw that interview with Gilly McMiller and I thought, this sounds like a great book. Let's go ahead and give it a shot, right? The other book is The Other Misses by Mary Kubica, um, or Kubica, I don't know how to pronounce it, but apparently they're making it, they're adapting it uh, to Netflix. And I think Nicole Kidman, I wanna say, has something to do with that. Um, and I know I've seen this floating around, a lot of people have read this on BookTube, but um, I wanted to read it. Don't remember, I think this came out last year. Somebody asked me if I was a part of the Book of the Month Club. <laughs> And I'm not. I'm just, I don't know. This came out in two, this came out this year. This came out in 2020. So with this one, you have Sadie and Will Faust have only just moved their family from bustling Chicago to, a, to small town Maine when their neighbor Morgan Baines is found dead in her home. The murder rocks their tiny coastal island. But no one is more shaken than Sadie. But it's not just Morgan's death that has Sadie on edge. It's the eerie and decrepit old home they inherited. It's Will's disturbed teenage niece, Imogen, with her threatening presence. And it's the troubling past that continues to wear at the seams of their family. As the eyes of suspicion turn towards the new family in town, Sadie is drawn deeper into the mystery of Morgan's death. But Sadie must be careful, for the more she discovers about Mrs. Baines, the more she begins to realize just how much she has to lose if the truth ever comes to light. Hmm. So kind of an isolated trope up on in the uh, coastal region of Maine. Again, you guys know I'd love to read about anything that takes place in New England because that's where I live. Um, and apparently it's on one of the islands off the coast of Maine. There are quite a few um, little islands off the coast of Maine. So I just read a book that took place place in the Thousand Islands region. I don't know if this one quite has that same, that locked room mystery type thing. I've read other uh, books by Mary Kubica and they're not quite that Agatha Christie. They're more psychological thrillers. Um, so this one sounded very interesting to me and um, I'm just excited to read that one. Okay, so those are the books that I got from the library. Then I went to BAM and when I went to BAM, I found some really cool books. Um, so we'll start with the first one, Something in the Water by Catherine. Oh, see, this is what I love about BAM, though. Look at this. Oops. Just peels right off. No issues. I love that. Okay, so this is by Catherine Stedman. Um, apparently, this is a Reese, Reese's Book Club. I don't really read anything in Reese's Book Club. I think I've, I think I've unwittingly read some stuff in Reese's Book Club. I'm not knocking her, and I'm not knocking anybody that reads Reese Witherspoon's book club books or selections, but I'm not really into that whole celebrity book club thing. But this one just sounded really cool. So basically what happens in this one, and, and the reason that I kind of was drawn to this, the protagonist is the documentary filmmaker, and I studied that a little bit in college. And so anything dealing with film and documentaries, I, I have a profound interest in. 
So the synopsis is Aaron is a documentary filmmaker on the brink of a professional breakthrough. Mark is a handsome investment baker with big plans. Passionately in love, they embark on a dream honeymoon to the tropical island of Bora Bora, where they enjoy the sun, the sand, and each other. Then while scuba diving in the crystal blue sea, they find something in the water. Could the life of your dreams be the stuff of nightmares. I'm going to stop there because I think that that just sums it up pretty I well. I really enjoy stories where an ordinary person is forced into making extraordinary things happen or forced into an extraordinary situation that sort of forces them to become a person that perhaps they didn't think that they could become. With Erin, she, she's an ordinary person. I wanted her to be an every woman. I wanted the reader to sort of see her as an avatar for themselves as they go through the decisions themselves in the book to say, yes, I would do that. Maybe not to the extent that she does, but definitely have those questions in their head. So yeah, the, the inspiration sort of came from that idea of wanting to have a woman who does extraordinary things, not a woman who already has sort of innate powers. Like she's not a spy. She's not a policewoman. She's not a doctor. She's you or me. You know, especially this time of year in New England, it's dark, it's dreary, it's getting cold. And so I kind of want to read about something that's, uh, you know, warm and tropical. Bora Bora sounds like a great place to read about. So we'll give this one a shot and see what happens. And you will be hearing about that at some point down the road. Um, another book that I had to pick up, as you saw in the beginning, was... <laughs> We are big fans in this house of Stephen Colbert, and as a matter of fact, we actually went last, well, at the beginning of the year in February before COVID um, hit in March, we went to um, see his show in New York because we're not far from New York City. And um, he is just the coolest guy ever. My husband and I are both just huge, giant fans of Stephen Colbert. He is so incredibly intelligent and at the same time, very salt of the earth. Shut your dirty little mouth! Person. And when we were there um, in the studio audience, he, you know, was so like so engaging to the audience off camera and so warm and friendly that, you know, he really is a cool guy. Jerry? Can I speak to you for a moment? Oh, I gotta leave early today. I have to have my uterus scraped. So, um, not only is he highly intelligent and extremely funny, Locker mate may be a turtle. But he's an author as well and has written other books, but I had to pick this one up. It's called Midnight Confessions. And if you guys don't know this about Stephen, Stephen Colbert, he's actually, um, he's a Catholic and he's a very um, devout Catholic. So that's a little factoid for you that you probably didn't know. This is not a religious book at all. This is a book that just has all these great little quotes. And I love these types of books, as you guys know, like shit my dad says, right? And I like to have these kind of books just laying around the house because if I'm in a foul mood or something like that, if they're right in front of me, I can pick them up and read something out of it, just flip to a page and laugh. It says here, it's like, I don't know how to tell if an avocado is ripe. I just squeeze three and then buy the second one. <laughs> right? <laughs> um, here, and there's some, there's some uh, illustrations as well. I did terrible things to rise to the top of my barbershop quartet. <laughs> Whenever I see a bowl of M&Ms at a party, I always toss in a couple of Skittles just to freak people out. Now, that is definitely something I would totally do. <laughs> You never want to go to a party with me around, that's for sure. But I had to pick this one up, and I'm just looking forward to reading to the rest. Maybe I'll start with a quote from this book or another one of my little uh, books, you know, that I have that are, are like this, that are humorous books um, at the beginning of my videos, just to kind of give you a little bit of a chuckle and start things off lightly. The next book I picked up was called The Chalk Man. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna start peeling these stickers off because it's gonna bug the crap out of me if they stay on here. So this one, you guys, um, I did a little bit of research up in, into when I was at BAM and I was, you know, cause that's what I do. I stand there and I, I look it up. I have to, I can't, I can't just like buy it off, off the cuff like that, especially if it's, you know, over six, six or seven bucks, right? Guys, I'm so lazy. I'm just gonna let the author tell you about it. The Chalkman is a very dark, creepy mystery. Um, it's set in two time periods, in 2016 and 1986. 
that's when we first meet Eddie, 12 year old Eddie and his gang of friends and they live in a small sleepy Wiltshire town and they invent this game where they start drawing chalk figures on the ground as a way to send secret messages between their gang. But then events take a darker turn when these chalk figures start to appear on their own just before some terrible things happen. And this culminates in these chalk figures leading the children to the body of a girl in the woods who has been murdered. Then we rejoin Eddie in 2016, 30 years later, and he thinks the past is behind him. He still lives in the same town. He's got a quiet life as a school teacher. Then he receives um, in the mail a letter containing just two things, a piece of chalk and the drawing of a stick figure. As history begins to repeat itself, Eddie realises that game was never really over. Uh, the book explores the darker side of childhood. It explores the secrets we all keep, especially in small towns, and also how small actions can have terrible consequences sometimes and how nobody is entirely innocent, not even children. So um, this book came out in 2018 and it did get some really good reviews. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading this. And um, the next book is called Paper Ghost, Ghosts by Julia Heberlin. And this one also sounded very interesting. She wrote Black Eyed Susans, which I actually heard a lot about, but I never read. Um, and it is labeled a novel of suspense. So this one is about um, an obsessive young woman who's been waiting half her life since she was 12 years old for this moment. She has planned, researched, trained, imagined every scenario. Now she is almost certain that the man who kidnapped and murdered her sister sits in the passenger seat beside her. Carl Lewis Feldman is a documentary, well, it's a recurring theme with documentary, photographer who may or may not have dementia and may or may not be a serial killer. <laughs> the young woman claims to be his long lost daughter. He doesn't believe her. He claims no memory of murdering girls across Texas in a string of places where he shot eerie pictures. She doesn't believe him. Determined to find the truth, she lures him out of a halfway house and proposes a dangerous idea. A 10 day road trip, just the two of them to examine cold cases linked to his haunting photographs. So I thought that that was just a great premise for a book. And I, you know, that synopsis hooked me right away because that was just very, it's very unique. It's very different. It's dealing with some um, different themes. You have um, dementia and um, kidnapping. And I'm sure other various themes will become interweaved into this book. So I'm excited to read this one. Um, Julia Heberlin. So we'll see what happens with that. And then you guys, so um, yeah, so last but not least, I wanted to, um, <laughs> I wanted to include a book because around this time of year, I read, um, oops, oh, this one did not peel so good. Mm, that makes me a little mad. That means it was probably sitting on the shelf forever. So that glue got adhered. Oh wait, oh wait, there it goes. <gasps> there it goes. That's so exciting. Look at, look at that. What is so gratifying about that? I love to read cozies. I love to read cozy books. I like to read Christmas stories. And the Christmas stories, that didn't happen until last year. So when I do my December TBR, I'm going to tell you about what the impetus was for me reading Christmas stories. Um, but I'm not going to tell you now because I don't want to go on and on and on about it. But one of the books that I did pick up on my BAM haul was a book by Debbie Maycomber. Um, and you guys, I'm sure, know who she is. You've seen her books everywhere, right? She writes a lot of cozy stories, uh, sort of, I don't know exactly what the genre is. I don't know if it's romance or I haven't read any other books by her except her Christmas books that she usually writes, you know, one every Christmas and she has been forever. And they're all under or like around 220, 250 pages long. And they're just these cozy, warm hearted, rainbows and unicorny type type books that really get you into um, that holiday mood. I read um, three books by her last year for the very, very first time. And I just loved them, you know? I think that this is the time of year that especially ending 2020, which we can all agree has been probably the worst year for most people. Um, I wanna end it on a light and fluffy note. And 
um, the premise of this one, or the synopsis of this one is, before beginning her dream job as a sous chef in one of Seattle's hottest new restaurants, Josie Avery takes a summer position cooking at a lakeside lodge in the remote Alaskan town of Ponder. <music> Josie falls for the rustic charms of the local community, including Jack Corcoran, the crotchety keeper of Ponder's famed sourdough starter, and, in particular, the quiet and intense Palmer Saxon, a famed master swordsmith. Josie and Palmer become close during the long Alaskan summer days, but Josie knows that come fall, she'll be returning to reality in the career she's worked so hard for. Palmer, on the other hand, would like nothing better than to make Josie his wife and to keep her in Ponder, but Josie can't imagine abandoning her mother in the Emerald City and sacrificing her career to stay in this isolated town, not even for a man she's quickly coming to love. Fate has other plans for Josie. So we'll see how this one goes. The other four, um, three, three or four books I read, Christmas stories I read, were all just, like I said, just lighthearted and sweet and the type of things that you just, for me personally, um, I never ever thought I would be reading Debbie Maycomber's books. <laughs> <laughs> but as I get older, I just find that it's just it's just so nice to read books that don't require a lot of brain cells, you know, that contain a lot of levity and really kind of peer into the positive side of things in life. And really and they do kind of give you that feeling of, you know, well, it's it's the holidays and um I guess it is a little bit of that because I grew up, you guys, I didn't celebrate Christmas growing up. So um, what we do now is, you know, um, my birthday is actually on Christmas, which is so bizarre because I grew up celebrating nothing, no holidays, no birthdays, no nothings. <laughs> You know, I had no emotional attachment to the holidays or Christmas or anything like that at all. So I just never bothered with them. But now that um, I'm in a much, much different place in my life, there's a reason why they exist. And there's a reason why people read them. And it's because they want to, to get into the holiday spirit. And they just want to read something that's, again, light and fluffy. So... So I'm filming this before Thanksgiving, you guys. So I hope that you guys all have a wonderful Thanksgiving or had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And last but not least, I wanted to give a shout out to a booktuber who has quickly become one of my favorite booktubers. His name is Kit. His channel is called Kit's World. I will link it down below. He just did a video. Um, I believe it was his latest video. He mentioned me and my channel and had the most incredibly um, wonderful things to say. Every time I get a shout out, I always go, really? Like, <laughs> like you really like me? I feel like Sally Fields. You love me. You really love me. You know, doing BookTube, I've, you know, really been able to find people who um, are are kind of like me. We're, we're all sort of like enigmas. So I've been able to, like, find a lot of people on BookTube with mutual interests, you know. And you guys know from watching my channel that my my interests are all across the board. Thing. So I just wanted to give a huge shout out to Kit and and he's just an amazing booktuber. He's very hard on himself. And I don't know why, because why are you so hard on yourself, Kit? You're so articulate, so eloquent, so much more than I am. And yet you had praises for me. So I don't get it. <laughs> but I love you. I think you're phenomenal. And I'm so happy, as I said to you before, that we were able to connect on, on this thing called booked, Booktube, which is just so crazy. Thank you. Thank you so much for saying those kind things. I really, really appreciate it. So guys, go check him out. And that's all I've got to say for today, you guys. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Again, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. And I will see you soon.